All right, welcome back to part six of this six part series on what's your attachment style and why does it matter? And hopefully you've been watching all the way up to this point because we've covered all the attachment styles by now. And I am going to discuss in this segment how to heal insecure attachment style and become more secure in your attachments. Yeah, let me say, yeah, I'm not, not an expert on it, but I, I read and research a lot and I'm trying and I have tried to apply a lot of these points into my own life. I've tried to take my own advice, so let's get into it. I want to start by saying that to become more a more secure attacher, it's obviously helpful if you find someone who is more secure in their attachments, right? Um, in order for us to have better relationships, relationships where there's more authenticity, more vulnerability, more reciprocation, more emotional balance, it's going to be easier if you find someone who is more attached, more secure in their attachment style, right? Or at least somebody who is willing to work on an insecure attachment style with you as you're working through those issues yourself. Otherwise, again, like we've got to recognize if we've we're partnered with somebody has, who has an insecure attachment style, we're trying to heal. They're not, maybe they're not even aware of the need or they don't care for the need to address the need to self heal. Uh, that's really going to hinder your progress, right? It might even, it's going to reopen wounds. It's going to trigger stuff in you, okay? So aside from that, let's say step one on the individual level, regardless of others. Number one, practice more self-awareness. Try to become aware of the patterns of insecurity within yourself that subconsciously run you, okay? Have been this undercurrent, underlying motivator in why you do or say the things that you do in relationships, uh, realize what created this insecurity and how to how do you need to repair and heal the damage the trauma how do you do that and remind yourself of why you picked up this coping mechanism in the first place remind yourself of how it has or hasn't served you again maybe this all started in your childhood and that was the best you could do at that time but you know, you're not in that past anymore. You're in a new reality where you don't have to live with this if you don't want to, okay? Um, but maybe out of a, an unawareness, a lack of awareness of this insecurity within yourself, it might have caused you to seek out connections with others from a, that place of insecurity, right? And um, caused you to try to fill some kind of void within yourself where maybe you're trying to access other people to supply something, you know, dare I say kind of a using relationship, right? Usury relationships. How might you have justified that behavior? Did it make you emotionally, financially, relationally unreliable to yourself and others? And have you externalized your personal power onto others by blaming or refusing accountability or responsibility. This is like really getting real with yourself about how this coping mechanism has or has not served you in life. Brutal honesty. <laughs> All right, step two, take a more observatory role with yourself. Try to observe yourself more objectively, like notice when the insecurities arise within yourself. And when they're running you, like, you know, and it might be after the fact and you're reflecting, you're like, God, why did I do that? Why did I say that? You know, and you realize it was coming from a place of, well, I didn't want to upset them. You know, catch yourself, even if it's after the fact, catch yourself in these coping mechanisms and then try to make a conscious effort to do the opposite, right? Resolve that insecurity. Try to counter that insecurity in a healthy way. And consider that how maybe you can change your way of relating to yourself and to other people so that the outcomes are remarkably better, okay? Or even slightly better, that would help, right? Through these practices and these experiences, then you are going to become probably more aware of having an exchange in your relationship that's more authentic, more reciprocal, more balanced. And then you get more expansion in these relationships, and as you get more expansion in these relationships and maybe that bond, that emotional connection deepens and expands, right? Then you become more aware of how your old coping mechanisms actually cause a lot of unnecessary pain in your life. And that reinforces you staying on track with a new way of relating. 
All right, number three, catch and transform insecurity driven behavior. Well, I kind of talked about that in the last step, but this is about you getting more proficient about it, more catching it, okay? Maybe where, like in step two, you don't realize until after the fact, and then you try to go back and address it like, hey, I know I said X, Y, Z, but actually I've thought about it, and what I really mean to say to you is A, B, C, okay? Um, well, in step three, you're catching it more proficiently because you become, oh, here we go. I'm, I know that I'm getting into this touchy situation here where I tend to do X, Y, Z, and I need to say A, B, C instead, hard as that is for me. Um, and so you get better about that so that you, in the moment, you, you catch yourself rather than after the fact, and you, you get better at transforming this behavior into um, more self-care, more self-cultivation, and you're, you're communicating your needs and wants more clearly, more directly, less hesitation, less fear. And yeah, if some kind of relationship damage occurs, you are quicker also to catch it and repair it. And this also builds more confidence and it reinforces this work that you're doing. Also, a part of this step is you prioritizing authenticity and reciprocation in your relationships because you become more mindful of it, right? And more observant of it. And when you are not getting authenticity and reciprocation because you're working on it within yourself and you're putting it out there, but you're not getting it back in return, you're like, oh, I see that. I see what's going on. And then you start walking more in your power to change your circumstances by changing the way you respond to others, right? Sometimes we just recognize and acknowledge they're not ready. They didn't reciprocate, and that doesn't necessarily mean I didn't deserve it. I tried, but hey, they're not ready, and that's on them. And you know what? I need to be around people who are ready. And so you kind of nip that in the bud with the way you respond to it before it impacts you badly, right? Before you end up how many weeks, months, years, God forbid, decades later, empty, realizing this person is never going to reciprocate. They're never going to be authentic, right? Um, no, you release these people before too long, okay? And you release them with a lot more ease and resilience. You don't personalize it, maybe like you would have in the past. You don't get emotionally out of balance over it like you maybe would have in the past. And you just don't let this derail you uh, in all practicality to the point where you become so dysregulated with your emotions uh, and you spiral emotionally and become you know, un unreliable, undependable. All right, step four, make self-care a habit. And this is where you kind of take step three uh, up on another notch and it becomes more habitual. You engaging in this way with people where you just start, you, you recognize within yourself, you're flowing in it, you're honoring yourself, you're acknowledging yourself, you're honoring and acknowledging the other person, whether they're ready or not, to reciprocate, be authentic, be vulnerable, right? You, you're, you're flowing in this way of engaging, this new way of engaging, and it's becoming more natural to you. And you're asking for support. You're not feeling embarrassed or apologetic or like there's something less than about you because you are asking for something. Um, and you just don't, you don't feel the shame that maybe in the past you would have felt whenever trouble comes up in a relationship. What you do is in those moments, you just confidently step in and you start trying to repair the connection. The emotional connection right and you stop thinking less of yourself or the other person when problems come up and you have more confidence in your ability to work through it together and resolve it and also you have built by this time a stronger support system of friends and family based on having consistently prioritized authentic reciprocal relationships this is also a lifestyle where you are I'm saying lifestyle because it's it's habitual, right? And it, it, it almost becomes second nature. It becomes natural. It becomes unscripted for you to cultivate and manage your responsibilities and resources and to share these things in an equitable way where it's not one-sided or unfair, consistently unfair, right? And when things do get out of balance, whether it's materially, you know, financially, emotionally, relationally, well, you acknowledge the impact that that's having on yourself and other people. And again, you apologize without all the shame and you accept what's in your control and what's not. And you work with what's in your power because you no longer externalize or try to manipulate power through others. So hopefully that helps give you some plan 
to work with them for healing any kind of insecure attachments and become more secure in your own attachment style. And yeah, might want to go through and rewatch this series again if you need a reminder. And if you like this content, then make sure you've subscribed and I look forward to connecting with y'all again. Be blessed.